John, let me come to you first. How good is he? You've seen him. You know he's got the moves, hasn't he? Three fight novice, never boxed amateur. Playing rugby two and a half years ago, he just said, Dad, I want to fight. So I said, OK, here's another one off the production line. My production line, so you know what? We're just having fun with it. You know, see where we go. He's a good game kid, he trains hard, he listens, and he's a thinker. You know, for a moment, he's never boxed in his life. No amateur at all. He's got some moves, hasn't he? Have to put you out to stud, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> They're worth a lot of money, my mate. <laughs> Ro Roman, uh, you didn't take to boxing immediately. You haven't been boxing since you were a small child. But it was inevitable, wasn't it? Listen, I come from his bollocks, so uh, it's inevitable. <laughs> that, uh, that, you know, I've got fighting ability. He's been in the family. And uh, he's shown through there. And all I'm doing is doing my best working out in the gym. On time, me dad, and uh, where it'll go, I don't know. But I'm sure I can go anywhere I want to, you know. It was interesting before your debut. I was I was looking up a few quotes from interviews um, you did because I was at your debut. And what I liked was you've got a, you, you, you're ambitious, but you've got a level-headed approach. You said, "Listen, if I could win an area title, let's do that, and then let's see what happens after that." Because I, I've always believed the step by step. Now that is the best way to do it. Yeah, it's like each piece of the puzzle, isn't it? I'm taking life as it is. I'm trying to live in the moment and uh, take each fight as, as another step towards where I want to go. But I'm not thinking ahead too much. I'm just taking each each fight as it is, training hard in the gym, and what will be will be, you know? I'll tell you what. Uh, go on, mate. I was going to say, it's good to look ahead, but there's no point looking further than you can see. No, no. <laughs> That's good advice, especially for a kid like yourself. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to be his opponent on Friday night. He'll look over in the corner, he'll see Roman Fury, he'll see yourself, Big John, he'll see Tyson around as well. I don't know if Tommy's going to be there as well, but I wouldn't want to be him. The thing is, though, you got to give these kids props for coming across. You know, and he's unbeaten himself, he'll want to win. They're hungry, these young lads. You know, so they bring something different on the night. But what I'm saying to him, if he's guided properly and nobody gets greedy, but you see, the benefit of training with me, I can take my time. I've got all the time in the world. Well, another 20 years, I hope, anyway. But you know what? I'm just going to do it right because I've got experience of the game. I was abused myself in the fight game, you know, so I know what it takes for these kids to come through properly, you know, and I'm just going to match him right and have fun with him. And it, it's something I've done. I've done all right for Tommy so far. I'm going to do it for him as well. You know, you know what, what better mentor than the big GK? You know, he's the talisman. Without him, nothing happens. That's why we're studying now talking. He's presented the platform, Tyson, for Roman, Tommy. So we're taking it with both hands. But it's all at the back of what Tyson's done, nobody else. Big up to Tyson Fury, there's only one. The best heavyweight in the world. And you'll see it on the 18th of May. Be there or be square. Well, I mean, another one of your guys who's on the card on Friday is Joseph Parker, of course. You know, he's, 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 he's part of the team, isn't he? And we saw what he did against Deontay Wilder. He's gone in really deep again against Gilles Zhang. Just, just give us your thoughts on, on that fight. It's, it's an intriguing well, matchup, that. I'm going to be honest with you. It's a tall order for Joe. Because at the minute, Zilai Zhang is probably one of the dangerous heavyweights in the world to anybody, including my own son. He's up there, gigantic man. What he does, he does well and clinical. You can't blinker, he's got you. And you know what? He's a southpaw. But Joe, again, he's the younger man. If he's learnt to move his head and get mobility, a lot more than we've seen in the past, because if he doesn't, he can't win. Because Zilai Zhang is a problem. We never thought Joe Joyce could ever get rocked, never mind, stopped twice. So it wasn't a fluke. He's a dangerous man, Eli Zhang. But I, can Joe do it? I didn't give him a chance again. Deontay Wilder, so he proved me wrong there. Even though Wilder never turned up, he was probably shot to bits of poor lad. But this is a different opposition. It's a fight I'm most interested in on this bill. You know, AJ, the big fight, we know what's going to happen there. If AJ boxes, uses his brain, is mentally right, AJ's one of the best heavyweights in the world. But can he keep it together mentally? And that's the key with AJ. If he can't, then Garner will capitalise on that. But I think he's a different man. He's a different animal, AJ. We'll just see. Ben Davis has done a great job with him. He looked brilliant in his last fight. Let's hope it can continue. But Zhang, let's put it this way. I'm glad Parker's fighting him. <laughs> Well, tell me this, Anthony Joshua, of course, against Francis Ngannou, there is now an added ingredient. You, you confirmed yesterday that Tyson Fury will indeed be ringside. What sort of pressure does that put on AJ? And will he be trying to make more of an impression and do a better job than Tyson did? What do you think? 
Well, if I was Ben, I'd, I'd be telling AJ to not be looking in the crowd at anybody. He needs to stay focused on Nganu. If he takes his eye off the ball, Nganu will catch him. But he's professional, he's experienced, two-time world champion. He's got the firepower, Nganu's there to be it. If he keeps it together and stays focused, I don't see a problem for AJ. But if his mental game wavers, he's got a problem. Because Nganu is a big man, he's strong, he makes you work all the time, he's twitching in front of you, he's offsetting you, he won't let you set up, you've seen that with Tyson. And I just hope they're prepared for that. He's going to be in your face, this big man, and he brings a problem. But if AJ boxes behind a jab, he looks something like he did in his last fight, I see AJ outpointing him by a country mile. But he could knock him out as well. We'll see. So, Roman, I've just I've got another one for you. Being around these fighters, being around your brother, being around Joseph Barker, well, we spoke to Anthony Joshua YouTube yesterday and he was saying that, that in his opinion, boxing is basically 80% mental, 20% physical. I mean, how how do you approach that equation yourself, seeing how the top level fighters, you know, make, do their preparations and go about things? Yeah, 100%. It's, it's like, like he says, 80% in between ears. And if you can't control your nerves and uh, guide the pressure into making you perform, you're not going to do very well, are you? So that's why I'm trying to come out here and enjoy myself and like being in the gym around Tyson around in fight week and fights like this I, I learn a lot and that's what I'm trying to do watching and studying him and I'm taking it into into this week he's learned the mental game of Tyson yeah because you fought yourself if you're not mentally there and you're tense you don't perform no matter how good you are if this don't follow these you can have all the ability in the world it'll leave you on the night I call it nervous syndrome